Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here and to represent the other university in Oxford, Oxford Brookes University, <laughs> particularly the business school. And um, I'm a senior lecturer in marketing at Oxford Brookes University Business School. And for my sins, I have also worked for over 10 years in the marketing industry. And what I'm going to talk about over the next 10 minutes or so is also a combination of industry and academia. It's a project that we do together with uh, two industry organizations, the BCMA. I don't know if anyone has heard about the BCMA. The BCMA is a marketing practitioner association, and they specialize in branded content and content marketing, the Branded Content Marketing Association. And we also collaborate with Ipsos, Ipsos Mori, one of the world leading market research uh, organizations. So what we have been looking at for quite a while is a pretty new marketing discipline, a marketing communications discipline. It's called content marketing or branded content marketing. I know some of you are not marketeers, so you might have never heard about branded content marketing. The interesting thing is that there are some technological changes that we're all aware of that are affecting marketing fundamentally. And there are some indications that branded content can help us deal with these changes. Let me see if it clicked there. It's working. Good. So um, why do you bother about branded content marketing, particularly if you're not a marketer? The first point I would like to make is, it's not only Oxford Brooks, it's not only Ipsos Mori and the Branded Content Marketing Association that says, oh, branded content is really important. It's also uh, a research company that is independent of our research, Altimeter Research. They found out in their research that marketeers all over the world say marketing branded content is one of our top priorities. So if you're not doing that yet, you might be behind the curve. The other point is more related to the technological changes that change our consumers, our target audience's behavior. And we heard already about younger target audiences who are not necessarily consuming media in the same way we do. So one key point, one fundamental change is, and you might be affected by that if you still do the old fashioned advertising, people are very cynical when it comes to advertising. People don't want to watch, people don't want to be interrupted by advertising. So uh, the younger generation, they watch Netflix, yeah? They record all the programs, they use software. We haven't got a clue about the software, but they use the software that helps them to filter out advertising. But some of you might still spend millions, if you work for Procter & Gamble, for example, you might still spend millions on your advertising budget. But what people say, advertising increasingly looks for ways to avoid being turned off. And branded content, our research indicates that branded content can help you to fill this gap. And why? Because people want to engage with content. And that's for marketers quite a new thing, that people actually want to watch the content you produce, watch the content you upload onto your Facebook site. But how do you manage that? You need to produce something of value. And this is what another important point is about. If you have to do something really, really important, don't leave it just to the marketeers. Yeah. But uh, one of the content experts in America and some others predict that not only every marketing department has to change, every organization has to change. Every organization has to become a publisher. Yeah. You might produce industrial glass, so you're not producing any materials, any high quality magazines, maybe a customer magazine, but anyone needs to have in the future potentially a YouTube channel. Why? Because you need to produce something beyond your products and services that gives you a chance to engage with people. We heard uh, earlier um, already that it gets more and more competitive. So the marketing department might in the future become half a publisher, half a broadcasting department, which means for your skills, even if you're an SME, you might um, either develop internally or collaborate externally with people who can help you to develop your own YouTube channel to provide high quality blogs or customer magazines or newsletters. So having made these three points, <clears throat> one question is, well, what is this magical thing, branded content? And this is what we're looking at in our research and we're spending a lot of time. We've done the literature review. We talked to a lot of marketing industry experts. And to give you a simplified definition, Branded content makes an audience choose to engage with you. 
So this is the paradigm shift. This is the change in perspective from push marketing, the typical scattergun approach. You do advertising. No, it's the other way around. You upload something onto your YouTube channel, your Facebook site, your other own media, and people are so interested in it that they actually pull the material from the internet. The question is how you do it. So branded content is something that makes people to engage with your brand. How do you do it? Through providing value. And depending on what your brand is about, depending what your brand values are, depending on what your positioning is about, it might be entertainment value. And we had quite a lot of entertainment value uh, when we saw uh, the first presentation. It might be informational value or it might be educational value. It can be, uh, branded content uh, comes up in many different shapes and forms. It can be almost anything. And some of the stuff you might already be doing. You might already uh, publish, if you're a B2B organization, you might already publish some trade journal articles. Maybe you try to become a thought leader. Yeah, that's something quite important. You might have already some videos on your website. You might potentially produce a customer magazine. The more interesting bit is not necessarily to do all of that, but combine it and promote it in the right way. And I've got an example. I would like to show you a small video. And I think we have to go uh, here. So this is a video. This is branded content. This is a video that has started a movement, yeah? And it's just some kind of branded content. Some of you might be aware of it, particularly if you have teenage daughters. Hi, Erin. Hi. Okay, so I'm gonna just okay. give you some actions to do. I just do the first thing that comes to mind. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. <laughs> Show me what it looks like to fight like a girl. <laughs> now throw like a girl. Aww. My name is Dakota and I'm 10 years old. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Throw like a girl. Fight like a girl. What does it mean to you when I say run like a girl? It means run fast as you can. So do you think you just insulted your sister? No. I mean, yeah, insulted girls, but not my sister. Is like a girl a good thing? Actually, I don't know what it really, if it's a bad thing or a good thing. It sounds like a bad thing. Sounds like you're trying to humiliate someone. So when they're in that vulnerable time, between 10 and 12, how do you think it affects them when somebody uses like a girl as an insult? I think it definitely drops their self-confidence and um, really puts them down because during that time, they're already trying to figure themselves out. And when somebody says, you hit like a girl, it's like, well, what does that mean? Because they think they're a strong person, it's kind of like telling them that they're weak and they're not as good as them. And what advice do you have to young girls who are told they run like a girl, kick like a girl, hit like a girl, swing like a girl? Keep doing it, because it's working. If somebody else says that running like a girl or kicking like a girl or shooting like a girl is something that you shouldn't be doing, that's their problem. Because if you're still scoring and you're still getting to the ball on time and you're still being first, you're doing it right. It doesn't matter what they say. I mean, yes, I kick like a girl and I swim like a girl and I walk like a girl and I wake up in the morning like a girl because I am a girl. And that is not something that I should be ashamed of. So I'm going to do it anyway. That's what they should do. If I asked you to, to run like a girl now, would you do it differently? I would run like myself. Would you like a chance to redo it? Why can't run like a girl also mean win the race?
So this is an American campaign, but it has developed a, a life of its own. Uh, when it was uh, uploaded onto the, the Procter & Gamble uh, Always website, it achieved over 70, over 70 million hits. Ah. Come ti chiami? Another interesting video. <laughs> Maybe more interesting than my slides, but you have no chance. So it has developed a life of its own. Over 70 million views within the first three months. And it has developed uh, in different countries a life of its own. Even uh, our English cricketers have joined in and produced a video by themselves, what it means to, to hit like a girl, and support this idea, taking up this stereotype that, that girls are not good at schools. Yeah? So this is a very strong brand idea to pick up a stereotype and try to change what's going on in society. Some of you might have heard, if you're a Guardian reader, you might have heard of the word zeitgeist, the spirit of the times. How can you actually change society helping people to improve their lives, like with this campaign, for example. So, how can you achieve? You might not have a big budget, a big production like Procter & Gamble. How can you achieve a branded content marketing success? Create brand, branded content that is engaging by providing high quality. If you don't provide high quality, people don't want to share it. Authenticity. You need to provide something that you as an organization are good at. If you're a bank, you might not necessarily want to do entertainment, but it might help you to stand out. It depends what you want to convey as a brand. Do you want to stand for being fun, being serious, being very knowledgeable? Do you want to be a thought leader? Then informational or educational content might be helpful. Interactivity is important because what you want to do, you want to create a conversation with your target audiences. You might provide a platform where people can communicate with each other. Peers, girls can share experience. Parents can share experience how they provide more self-confidence, how they help their daughters, help their children to, to grow up more happily. And last but not least, as you could see with this example, it helps when you have a good story to tell. So branded content, to sum up, branded content can help you to engage and inspire your audiences, your target audiences. It can help you to build relationships because this is what continuously is getting more and more difficult in marketing because people don't care as much about your product as you might do. And last but not least, if you manage to engage, inspire, and develop relationships with people, you should be able to grow your brand and that should be an aim for every organization. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.